Howie does a great job of assembling both lines of scrimmage all the time. I know, you know, and he just does a great job of player acquisition. And, um, you know, I, I would anticipate Jalen Hurts taking a huge step forward year two, you know, as a full-time starter and, and, and you know, doing a good job and, and moving the football. I mean, they did a really nice job offensively. Um, I think Coach Sirianni and his staff do a good job of keeping teams off balance with some of the unique formations and, and things they do with Jalen. I think that's really puts a lot of stress on the defense. We'll get more into that if we have time later on in the show. But next up is Coach John D. Filippo, of course, a member of your Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles. He joins the Football Playbook Show right now. Good morning, Coach. How are we doing? Rick, what's up? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man, I uh, I appreciate the time. So glad that you can hop on here with us. I think you're checking in from Florida these days. Is that right? I am. I'm down in Atlantic Beach, Florida. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's nice down here and it's kind of my my home away from home, you know, and, and it's a place to go. And, you know, you're on sabbatical. So it's a good place to sabbatical for sure. I'm mad at you, coach. I'm over here at the Jersey Shore. So, hey, Florida Beach, Jersey Beach. All good, except you get the nice weather year round. So I'm not mad at that. Uh, we'll get into more about what you're doing down there in Florida, some of the things you have on the horizon. But we are a very uh, Philadelphia intensive show, uh, very Eagles friendly show. And we've already got the chat room clamoring for you to come back. Uh, so if you don't mind, I want to get into some uh, Eagles talk. And obviously, we'll go back to you your time as a quarterback coach with the Philadelphia Eagles, that magical run. Uh, what a time it is. Do you miss the city of brotherly love? Uh, I miss it a ton. Um, you know, I went to high school in the Philadelphia area. I went to Radnor high school. So, you know, I moved there when I was a sophomore in, in, in high school and my dad was actually the athletic director at Villanova. So I was like, right as I moved there, I was immersed right in the Philadelphia sports scene and, it was, I mean, just going to all kinds of games was just awesome and, and being around the coaches and the players and, you know, at the collegiate level and at, at the pro level, um, the access I was very fortunate to have uh, was just awesome. And you can't get a more passionate fan base than the Philadelphia fan base. And it was just a great two years for my family and I. And it was almost surreal coming back. It was just because it was the first time I'd moved in my coaching career where, I, I knew where things were. I knew streets. I knew neighborhoods. I knew, you know, so it, it was just a really smooth transition. And the people in Philadelphia are awesome. Yeah. And I would argue there's few, if any, better places to win. Uh, you know, we had Coach Eugene Chung on and I said, man, that was probably the best party I've ever been to in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, down down there on Broad Street and you had guys just hanging off from the statues and uh, even the police partaking in the festivities, I never seen anything like it. So uh, what it, a time! It was incredible. I, my wife and I still look at videos. We, you know, from from the from the bus at that, and just what a, what a great time to be alive, man. You know what I mean? It was just a what, was. A, what a great time. It was because it truly was the story of the underdog. There wasn't all these expectations where suddenly this year now, you know, we saw Jason Kelsey come out and say, "Hey." expectations don't mean a thing but it's a little bit of a different story than 2017 because eagles coming into the season as favorites all these big off-season additions that has the fan base excited we saw the rams uh last night you know pretty pretty uh vulnerable and you could argue that both the buccaneers packers have all taken steps backward you could say what you want about the Eagles quarterback position, but San Francisco has just as many question marks. So uh, why not Philadelphia? I mean, do you have your finger on the pulse with how good this team can be? You know, I was there. I was fortunate enough. I went for, for training camp. I went to the, the one of the practices uh, in the stadium uh, and I was, you know, fortunate enough to, to be down there. And, and the Eagles are a really good looking football team. I mean, you know, Howie does a great job of assembling both lines of scrimmage all the time. I know, you know, and he just does a great job of player acquisition. And, um, you know, I, I would anticipate Jalen Hurts taking a huge step forward year two, you know, as a full-time starter and, and, and you know, doing a good job and, and moving the football. I mean, they did a really nice job offensively. Um, I think Coach Sirianni and his staff do a good job of keeping teams off balance with some of the unique formations and, 
and things they do with Jalen. I think that's really puts a lot of stress on the defense. And I think I, I think the expectations, you know, fit the what the Eagles are. I, I, I think they're a good, really good football team. Well, I can tell you this. Expectations aren't going to phase Jalen Hurts. This kid's as cool as a cucumber from what I've seen. Uh, but since you were down there in training camp, tell us what you saw from the Jalen Hurts development, because I think he is probably under the microscope more than any other player on this roster. A lot of talk here in Philadelphia about could he be a franchise quarterback and command franchise money? Uh, where do you see his development going? Is is it something where he needs to become more of a pocket passer and read through his progressions, coach? Or is it, hey, you know, he's a great dual threat quarterback. Let's enhance those attributes and improve what he does well. I think it's that. I, I don't think you ever, with a guy that's that blessed athletically, I don't think you ever want to take a, a quarterback's athleticism away from him. Now, there's times you need to be smart about it. There's times when, you know, I'm sure I didn't, I only saw one practice, but he looked confident as heck when I was in there. He threw the ball on time and accurately. Um, and so, I, like I said, I anticipate him taking a huge step forward. You know, it's hard to get the perfect play call all the time. You know, as a former play caller in the NFL, quarterback coach, it's hard to get the perfect play call, especially on third down when the you know, defense is changing up the coverages and this and that. And there's there's a times where as a coach, we're just like, when you see that quarterback take off and go on third and seven and for a gain of 10 and gets down, you're like, hey, man, great job. You know, and so that was, you know, one mantra I always talk about with the quarterbacks is we always try to get one first down the game with our feet. And I think he can get multiple first downs with his feet, um, you know, it, whether the pocket breaks down or not, or it's a quarterback design run. Um, he's just an explosive player. And, and, you know, interviewing him coming out of, coming out of college, he, he is a confident guy. I mean, the pressure is not is not going to get to him, in my opinion. Um, he's a very confident, uh, not cocky, but very confident in his ability. Uh, and I, I really look forward to watching him play. Rick, I can't hear you. You might be on mute. Sorry about that, Coach. Oh, yeah, I had a chance to be around Jalen uh, for a week at the Senior Bowl. I think, I think he was at the Heisman Trophy presentation. And, yeah, the demeanor, the poise. And you're talking about a guy now who's getting bombarded from every angle, from coaches, from media, from parents and autographs. And, like, never once got disrupted or flustered. And that's all off the field stuff. But from everything you hear, that's how he is in the huddle. That's how the teammates respect him. Uh, the Eagles hype video came out yesterday and he was an integral part of that as well. So uh, you mentioned the formations now. Coach John D. Filippo here on the football playbook Super Bowl champion with your Philadelphia Eagles. You mentioned the formations kind of keeps the uh, defense off balance and guessing. I guess the one criticism we hear about the Eagles offense is kind of the pre-snap movement, the lack of motion being involved before the snap. I know uh, Coach Sirianni was kind of feeling himself out there at the beginning, made some adjustments after that two and five start. They run into the playoffs. Was that just kind of feeling our oats there? Do you think that we'll see more motion? What why do you think there was not a lot of pre-snap motion last year? And should we anticipate more this year? You know, as a guy that, you know, did not watch all the Eagles games, I, I can't speak on why there wasn't. I don't know the percentages and those things, but I can I can talk to you about pre-snap motion and shifting. Um, it depends. A lot of it depends on the quarterback, uh, because sometimes with a younger quarterback, you want him to have the picture when, when he gets the ball in his hands. And, you know, sometimes if you pre-snap shift in motion, the picture can change, the coverage can change. So some of it may have been the youth of the quarterback. I don't know. But I'm just talking about, you know, specific instances I've been around where I've had young guys in the past and even some some veterans that are like, hey, Flip, I, 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 want, I, I want to see the picture. So, you know, some people shift in motion to look cute. Uh, others, if there's a purpose for it, look, let's do it. And, um, you know, there's some teams that when you shift from – you know, formation strength to the field. They leave the nickel over to the field. And now you can get, you know, your line, your receiver on a backer or a safety. So if there's if there's a purpose for it, I think it's awesome. Because I do think it, it does keep cadence and shifting in motion do keep the defense at bay because they're allowed to move it whenever the heck they want and the offense is not. So 
Um, you know, I, I don't know if you'll see more of that out of the Eagles, but that's my kind of what I have my thoughts on shifting and motioning. Very good. Uh, Coach Flip here on the football playbook. You know, we had Brian Baldinger on a previous segment, and I had mentioned to him that his coach at Alabama, Quincy Avery, had suggested that Jalen was almost too rocked up coming out of college where he was built like a linebacker, a running back almost. And so he he kind of lessened the workload in the weight room this offseason, which uh, Coach Avery saying has led to better flexibility, better mechanics, which has also resulted in, in better confidence for Jalen Hurts. Do you buy into that philosophy? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think the quarterback can be too rocked up, as you said. I, I think you got to be really careful, um, you know, in terms of, you know, weight, in terms of, like you said, flexibility, um, arm angle, explosion out of the pocket. You know, if you're too tight, it gets it gets hard. Um, just knowing being in the Eagles building, uh, they have every resource needed in terms of the strength and conditioning, nutrition. I mean, that is so big in that building. And Mr. Lurie is big into it and never one time told the coaching staff no on anything when it came, especially to strength and conditioning and nutrition. So there's a lot of smart people in that building that are helping those guys out with making those decisions. Yeah, the Eagles, one of the teams that were kind of ahead of the curve uh, with analytics and tracking and catapult and all that stuff now, which is considered the norm. I mean, every team is using that. Um, so, all right, let me ask you within the, the division, uh, this team is somewhat still disrespected because they won nine games a year ago. They added all these pieces, A.J. Brown on offense, a bunch of pieces on defense, yet – uh, Vegas has the over under win total at nine and a half. A lot of sports books still have the Cowboys favored to win the division. Uh, I think, you know, it's been something crazy. Nobody has repeated as NFC East champions for, I don't know how many years it is. The Cowboys won it last year. How do you handicap this NFC East race? It's going to be, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch and, First off, the NFC East is just a fun place to be because all those teams have been playing each other for so long. So, you know, you get those those Eagles, Redskins, Eagles, Dallas. I mean, Giants, Dallas. I mean, those are just great games, you know. So if you're an NFL fan, and I just you got to love NFC East football, number one. Number two, um, I, I think that the teams are pretty evenly matched. I really do. I, I, I think, you know, well, I tell you, A.J. Brown is, a, is one heck of a player uh, and – you know, again, just goes to Howie, you know, being able to add a player of that caliber and, and that is young, you know, and, and to, you know, that guy's going to be an eagle for a long time if he if he produces, if he wants to be, if they want him. And so, you know, that that's that's going to be really exciting to watch. And I think, like, like you've said, Rick, I think the maturation of Jalen Hurts is going to is going to be where the Eagles go. And I hate to put too much onus on the quarterback position because there are, you know, 10 other guys on the field, but it is what it is. I mean, that's why those guys get paid what they do. Uh, that's why they have to spend that time in the building. Um, you know, the other storyline in the NFC East is, you know, how, how's Carson going to play? You know, and, and I mean, Carson was pretty darn good last year in a lot of games. OK, and, and uh, you know, I know, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a homer because I, I love Carson. But, um, you know, that's that, that's another question mark with the with the Redskins, I think. I was up at the Giants practice watching them and boy, Coach Dayball's flying around and those guys are flying around and, you know, they're going to be a tough, a tough, you know, uh, beat, you know, twice. So the Giants are, are good. And then obviously Dallas, there's always going to have players, you know, they're always going to have really good skill players. I know they lost their really good left tackle. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they, how they, that, who, who takes his place. Uh, but, you know, obviously Dak Prescott's had a fantastic career so far and, uh, you know, it's just a wide open race. It really is. And a lot of it's going to come down to who stays the healthiest, um, you know, and, and that's going to be always a play a huge part. But it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a fun division to watch. No, it's, it is. It's going to be a double chin strap affair, no doubt about it. And you were reading my mind because I wanted to pick your brain on the one Carson Wentz, who's now with uh, Washington Commanders. And what happened? I mean, you know, he had a pretty solid regular season there with the Colts last year yep. was the playoff performance just such a disappointment that the team felt like they had to move on and you said you were at the Washington training camp uh what's your finger on the pulse with Carson Wentz for this season well you know 
again, this is just one man's opinion. Um, you know, the fact that they lost those last two games, you know, and, and didn't perform great offensively probably led to a lot of that decision uh, in Indy. I don't know how that whole thing went down. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. When I was at the commander's training camp, I had a chance to spend some time with Carson, um, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, we talked some football, mainly we just talked about our families and, and this and that. He seems to be in a really good place. Uh, he looks really good, uh, looks lean like he always does. I mean, Carson takes great care of himself. Uh, you know, he's moving around well. You know, I, I he's never said this to me, but I think, you know, the back injury and obviously the ACL, those are hard to come back from, uh, difficult at times to come back from. And I, I, I just think he's in a good spot mentally. I really do. I, I, I think, and it's a good marriage in my opinion, because he needed that team and the team needed him. And it, usually when that happens, you, you can make things work. And it's, I'm really excited for him um, to come back and, 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 and play well. No, we'll definitely be keeping tabs on the entire NFC East here on the Jacob Sports Channel, no doubt about that. Um, I'm curious, Coach, just a one follow-up on Carson Wentz because I saw him at the Combine coming out of North Dakota State. Probably said, who the heck is this kid coming up to me telling me what to do? But I said, yo, Carson, how about you stop diving head first? Because I, I saw in college he got hurt diving head first. I saw a lot of injuries with Philadelphia diving head first. Uh, did that topic of conversation ever come up with you guys? And should he think about resorting to becoming more of a pocket passer with Washington? I think it's the same thing with, with Jalen. I think you, you, your pocket movement, you climb, if you need to climb, you slide, if you need to slide. And if you, if, if it's clean, you stay back there. You know, if it's, if there's a throw to be made, we make it. And if there's not, then we use our God given ability to make a play, whether that be extend the play out of the pocket or, or take off and go. And, I think with Matt, with, with with being a little bit more mature than you know guys, all these guys coming out of college think that oh I'm never gonna get hurt. I'm not gonna you know. Uh, I, I think with maturity, I think these guys understand. Hey, I better protect myself, and not only protect yourself for you as a quarterback and a player, but also you got to protect the team. And I'm not just talking about Carson. I'm talking about any quarterback. I mean, you have the livelihood. Whenever you touch that ball as a quarterback, you have the livelihood of everyone in that building on your shoulders. And there's some guys that can accept that pressure and there's some guys that can't. And that's for any quarterback. I mean, because we touch the ball on every single play. And so I think Carson will do a good job protecting the football this year and protecting himself. Uh, and I think now that he's a little bit older and, and further in his career, I think he understands that. Uh, again, Carson's a very confident guy in his ability. Uh, he's a, I mean, you've stood next to him, Rick. He's a big dude, man. I mean, he's a big dude. Mm -hmm. And so you can take some of those hits when you're a big guy, but you're also playing against guys, big dudes as well. So, um, like I said, I'm really excited for Carson. Uh, listen, no doubt about it. When he's on, he's on. And that Ooh. Washington team, I think, is going to be a tougher out. I think a lot of people just assume the Eagles are going to sweep that season series. Ah, not so fast, my friend. That's that's going to be a tough matchup for sure. Now, you mentioned – I, I got to pick your brain here because you mentioned you were – at the Giants camp, yeah, Daniel Jones, another quarterback who tends to tuck and run. We saw him injure the neck last year uh, running the ball. So what did you see? I, I've been towards the arrow of Daniel Jones. I, I, I seen what I needed to see. I'm not quite sure he's a franchise quarterback, new regime, new coach, fresh start. What's your take on Daniel Jones? Yeah, yeah. Um Daniel practiced very well the day I was there. Uh, the number one thing that I, I really enjoyed watching was Coach Dayball is trying to set a mentality up there. And he basically threw out the script one day at practice and just it was a red zone period and ran it almost every snap and was just trying to, hey, we got we got to run the ball in the, in the, in the red zone when there's 22 dudes in a tight spot. You know, and, and the running back has to make the safety miss. There's going to be one unblocked down there all the time, and that's the running back's guy. He has to make a miss. Either you run him over, you make a miss, do something. Okay. So the mentality there of what they're trying to set, I think, is is the first thing to talk about with the Giants. And it's a big year for Daniel Jones. There's no doubt about it. It's a big year for him. Obviously, he knows that. The Giants know that. Um, and, and it, it, you know, that's not an easy place to play either, you know, in that market. Uh, so, 
Um, it's a big year for him. But I, like I said, I, I was really impressed with the way Coach Dayball ran practice and his coach. I know his. I mean, you got my my boy might grow up there. I mean, you, they, they had a really good coaching staff up there in, in New York. I mean, Coach Dayball did a great job of someone that staff, and so I, I think they'll, they'll be better. Yeah, I mean, I had not met uh, Coach Dable, Dable uh, prior to him taking the Giants head coaching job, so I was kind of playing a wait-and-see approach. Uh, hard to judge off of preseason and training camp, but I will say it seems like they got the right guy this time because it's been somewhat of a revolving door. Everybody wanted Tom Coughlin out the door. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for because no they, they recycled about three or four coaches there before they found a, a good one, so – um, coach John D. Filippo, uh, an honor and privilege to have him here. Hopefully, you have a few more minutes, coach. I'd love to pick your brain hey, a little bit. Time is something I have a lot of these days. <laughs> well, speaking of that, <laughs> so so you, you've taken a step back this season. Uh, you've obviously been visiting NFL training camps. Were you, were you on location at any, at any other camps this season? Yeah, well, if we got so my parents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary up in Boston. Congrats. This summer. So my whole family converged down in Wellesley, Massachusetts. And my wife and daughter flew back to uh, Florida from there. I rented a car and went to Buffalo, down to the Pittsburgh Panthers, Pittsburgh Steelers, Eagles, Jets, Giants, Penn State. James Franklin was my receiver coach in college. Oh. Um, Then I drove down to see the Commanders in Washington. Then I went to Wake Forest. Uh, then I stopped in uh, Atlanta and Carolina. So I was on the road for about three and a half weeks. And uh, it was just good to get football back in again. I, that's the part you miss. Is you just miss football. Like you miss being a part of something bigger than yourself. You miss the, the coaching. You miss, you know, be, being on a coaching staff. Um, to say you miss working from six in the morning till two in the morning, I, you got to be a little bit psycho to say you enjoy that. But, you know, you do miss parts of that as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was just good to be back around football. It, sh- it was just awesome. No, you definitely got the sickness, uh, Coach. You got to have the sickness to be in this business. <laughs> and uh, I think the Steelers were back in Latrobe this year, were they not? They were. They were. I, they, I got to see the coaching staff. They got the night I was there. They got rained out, so I didn't get a chance to 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 see the practice. But I, I got a chance to spend some time with the coaching staff, so that was good. Yeah, last time I, I was there in the rain and they moved it in, inside to the gymnasium. But just the, the training camp ambiance in the feel oh, yeah. when you go to Latrobe is just one of my favorite pit stops a, a, along the training camp. And I had a chance. I didn't know that about Coach Franklin. I had a chance to get up to Penn State. A little bit surprised they were unranked going into the season because that defense Whew. looks really, really good. And that Joey Porter Jr., he's a player now. They flew around on defense when I was there at practice. So, and like I said, I, I've known Coach Coach Franklin and I have known each other since I was 18 years old. So, I mean, I had – he was so welcoming and, and let me in meetings, and I was in the quarterback meetings. And, uh, boy, they have – you know, the young man they have playing quarterback there now, Clifford, is is obviously has a ton of experience. But, boy, they have two young kids under him that have a chance to be really good. Um, well, that Drew Alar, he could have went to any college in the country. Yeah, they have they have two young guys underneath this Clifford that are whew, those guys are guys you want in your building in, in college football. Hey, if you say it, Coach, I believe it. Uh, so let's get let's go now down to Florida where you're checking in from. Uh, we connected through our good friend Coach Chung, who I've had the pleasure of working with now for the past two years or so uh, with the Hub Football Camp. It all came about during the pandemic when these street free agents they were having a hard time getting inside the building due to the COVID testing and the protocol and the restrictions and the limitations and lo and behold i mean hey we did a great job i think we got one out of four guys off the street and into the nfl or cfl we had 85 guys in the usfl and 50 of those guys went on uh to the nfl and so it it created a lot of opportunities and and doors and looks and and now they're doing a uh transfer portal camp in addition to the pro camp which will be kind of a similar format but for players in the ncaa transfer portal i know people hear nil and transfer portal they know it's the wild wild west they might not know there's fourteen thousand players sitting in the transfer portal 
And the latest uh, data suggests that 40% of these kids never even suit up again once they enter the portal. And a lot of it comes from not having film. They go to a school, the coaches change, maybe they don't play a lot. So tell the folks at home what you're doing with the uh, Hub Football Camp. Yeah, I just got started with them and, and I'm looking forward to working my, my first camp here coming up and down in Naples. And I'm just really looking forward to, to, to being a part of it, a small part of it. And, uh, you know, helping coach the QBs and helping out Coach Chung, you know, whatever he needs me to do. And, um, obviously, he's down there in Naples. I'm a little bit north of him in Atlantic Beach, Florida. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting down there. And I, I think anytime you can give a young man an opportunity, I think it's awesome. That's why people ask me a lot about, hey, the XFL and, and, and the USFL. And I'm like, hey, well, it, it's more opportunities for people to play to play the great game of football. It's more opportunities for coaches to coach. It's more opportunities for refs to ref. It's more opportunities for broadcasters to broadcast. And I just think anytime you can get on a field and play in games, that's why I was so disappointed as a coach when NFL Europe dissolved because um, you, you got to send five or six guys over from each team to go play. And, you know, I've coached some good young quarterbacks that haven't just gotten an opportunity you know, they, they should be number twos or, you know, starters on, on certain teams. And they just haven't had the film to put on. And that, that's why I think anytime you can get these leagues that, and obviously that the camps are helping out this process, I think it's, it's great for everybody. No doubt about it. And the players are going to be in for a treat to get hands-on coaching and feedback from yourself because – that's part of the process is leave a better player, learn new techniques, learn elements of your game that you didn't know you had uh, maybe in the toolbox. And so uh, any player or agent interested, hubfootball.com, if you want to learn more about that. You make a great point about the NFL Europe, which I miss dearly. And I'm so happy that the XFL and the USFL look like they're going to be around, at least in the short term. And I would argue, I, I, I'd be curious to get your opinion like if I'm Carson Wentz, right, who just had a tryout uh, with the Denver Broncos after being released by the Eagles. But you tell me, Coach, like would he benefit more playing a season in, in, in a spring league as a starter, getting in-game reps, or would he benefit more being on a, a, a practice squad for his development? Do you think? You're talking about – you said Carson Wentz? Carson Strong. Oh, Carson, Carson Strong. Strong. The oh. undrafted free agent uh, out of Nevada, successful co yep. college career. Didn't quite uh, pan out with the Eagles. They gave him – he was the highest paid undrafted free agent, by the way. Didn't make the cut. Tried out for Denver. Didn't get picked up there. If you're Carson Wentz, do you go try to latch on to a practice squad or do you go try to play a season in the spring, spring league? Do you uh, think? Any young quarterback, I would tell them to go play. I, I, I would tell them to go play. Um, the other situation is this, okay. I, I, here's, here's, here's the pros of playing. I'll start off with, with the pros of playing. Um, the pros of playing are obviously you, you get experience, you get tape. Okay. You can make mistakes. You can, you know, understand the speed of pro football. Okay. The cons, if you turn down a practice squad opportunity are the coaches don't know you. Like they don't, they didn't have a chance to get their hands on you on an everyday basis saying, boy, player X really does a great job with our starter. He, our starter assigns him to projects and he comes back and says, hey, but, 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 but they, they do this, 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 this. Okay. Um, the other piece, okay, if I was advising, if I had a son, if I was advising him which route to go, would be, okay, who's going to, who's your quarterback coach and offensive coordinator? Are they known for developing? Do are they? Will they take the time to try to develop you? Um, you know, we we had a young man in Philadelphia, Nate Sudfeld, and um, boy, was he fun to develop, man! And, and and we had a plan. We used to go out three hours before the game, and I'd put him through an hour workout. And you know, back then it was obviously it was it was twenty games, but by the end of the season, you get twenty hours of, of one on one individual time with your position coach. So I, 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 I'm not, and I'm not. This isn't one of these. I'm just, I'm just talking to you about how you you develop willingness to develop quarterbacks. So I would say, hey, is is, is the coaching staff they're known for developing? They have a plan to develop you. Uh, would be another critical piece. But at the end of the day, I don't think you can ever be wrong going to play. 
Yeah, and Sudfeld just got paid this offseason, two million bucks to be a backup. Pretty good. Not too many backup quarterbacks earning that kind of coin. So uh, and he's yeah. well worth that. Yeah, he is and well but he great. was he a project. Is, he was he a project. Is well worth that. And that's a that's a young man you want in your building. He is great, understands his role. He's big, he can still move. He's got a he can make all the throws. He's not a stiff back there where he's just going to be a, a X marks the spot at seven and a half yards deep. That's not who he is. Um, that was a great pickup. Yeah, I know the 49ers really wanted to hold on to him, and then the whole Jimmy Garoppolo situation yeah. unfolded the way it did. And, you know, they gave him guaranteed money. They had to let him go. Next thing you know, I don't know if you saw Hard Knocks. He's on the red eye in the film room. Coach Campbell didn't even know he was – oh, you took the red eye. We, By the way, we signed uh, – we claimed Sudfeld off waivers, and that's a good spot for him. That's a great good spot, spot for him. Yeah. Did you make it to Lions camp at all? I did not. Okay. I didn't. I, I went out in the spring, Rick. I went out to Kansas City because uh, okay. obviously I have a really good relationship with Matt Nagy, uh, you know, and he and I were together last year. He was my boss in Chicago and he and I have been friends for a long time. And so I went out and watched the Chiefs this spring and they were mandatory camp. But uh, I just didn't have time to get out out there. And really the most west I went was uh, Pittsburgh. Okay, let me ask you about Justin Fields then, because uh, there was a lot of quarterbacks in the first round taken last year. You had Mac Jones, you had uh, 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 Trey, Trey Lance, you had all these guys. Uh, where do you see Justin Fields in his uh, development at this time? Now, he doesn't have the luxury like a Jalen Hurts of a great offensive line. It seems like right. you know he's under duress constantly, and it's kind of hard to gauge a quarterback's development sometimes. And I think yeah. back to Carr in Houston where he was just under the gun so frequently early on in his career, he never recovered from it. Any concerns there with Fields? Well, I'm hoping that doesn't happen to him, obviously, um, because he's a tremendous talent. Um, Justin is as athletic a guy as I've been around in a long time. I mean, he can his arm angle can change. Uh, he is – legit fast i mean usually the fact he's probably one of the fastest guys on the field each week he's big big lower body strong um i people ask me about justin all the time i think justin has a chance to be an elite second and third level thrower he really does like he the way he can throw the deep ball it, it's it's a gift it really is and i know the thing that justin and i were trying to work on when i was there was just those first level throws those omahas those slants those smokes the bubble screens just getting it up and out, you know what I'm saying? And just having that quick, that quick upper body twitch. And he, he bought in. I mean, he totally did whatever we asked him to do. Um, but that's the one thing I, I'd love to see Justin improve on is, is just that first level up and out, you know, tight window slant that where that ball's got to be up and out quick and then still be thrown with tremendous accuracy. So um, I know he knows that. And, um, I, I look. I could see him improving on that drastically. I, I think he can be a good quarterback in this league, and I think he's shown the flashes and the glimpses. And it's just a matter of you know, I hate to say it, but putting the talent around him because now the wide receivers are kind of banged up, offensive line not the most reliable. So it's not it's not a, it's not a situation that's going to necessarily breed success. But man, I'm telling you, I'm with you, coach. I think he's got potential, untapped potential in that arm. Uh, man, I, I could sit here and, and cancel the rest of the shows and just talk football with Coach D here. But uh, let me ask you, I mean, what's next for Coach Flip? What are you going to be doing this season? Will you be uh, making any other tours? What's what's the plan between now and next season? What do you got cooking? Well, what's next on the horizon? There's only one person that knows that, and he is, hasn't come down to me in a dream yet and told me what the, ne what the next, next move is, but – I, we have faith in, in that there is a plan and um, so we'll see, uh, you know, it was time. It, it was time uh, to take a year and take a breather. I just had a, a my wife just, and I just had a daughter. She's two now. Congrats. Um, you know, during when I was in Chicago, I saw like, for, I saw her half an hour a week awake uh, and, and it was just time. And um, you know, my wife was really pushing me to, to take this year off. Um, really in, in a way where it wasn't overbearing where it's like, you know, it's one of those where either you take a year off or you I'm hitting the highway. It wasn't that at all. It was yeah. just, Hey, 
let's just come, let's just take a breather. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, was very fortunate, like I said, to travel around. I don't have any plans to go anywhere this fall because I, I don't want to bother the coaching staff there when they're playing for, you know, game week prep. That's hard enough. You don't need somebody else in the building there. So um, just do things like this. I Like, Rick, I, I can't thank you enough for having me on. I, I just love talking ball, and, and I love – Oh, we'll have you back then. <laughs> I, I just love it. And, and so, uh, you know – I love doing things like this. I was on Sirius XM the other day for, you know, 15, 20 minutes doing, doing a piece. And I just enjoy talking football. So uh, that's, that's the plan. Yeah. This was supposed to be 15, 20 minutes, but we went a little over time here. Uh, but no, congrats on your daughter. I have a four-year-old. I get it. It goes in the blink of an eye and I do some scouting with the NFL PA ball. Obviously I work with hub now, Jacob sports. I've been doing the draft Bible since 2021 and, uh, that's the sacrifice with this great game of football. It, it, it does put a toll and a tax on your family. And it's funny because at Penn State practice, I, I, I bumped into Coach Dinkins, whose son is a tight end there for Penn State. He used to be at Rutgers. I used to see him all the time at Rutgers. I think he was with Tampa Bay as well. I said, what are you doing these days, Coach? He said, well, you know, it was either coaching or family. He's like, mm-hmm. and, and he's got a daughter who's like an all-state volleyball player. His son's now – playing at Penn state. And he's like, you know, I just really wanted to be there and, and have some time with my kids. And no, it's, uh, it's really something that people on the outside don't realize. They think, Hey man, stop complaining about working in football. But Hey, when you start to grow the family and miss out on those first days of school and all that fun stuff, I mean, uh, you know, it tugs at you. So I get it. Um, I know I speak for everybody listening. Uh, We'd love to see you back in the league and you see uh, Kevin Savard there. And thanks Kevin. Appreciate you, man. All the sentiments in the chat room, you're getting showered with a lot of praise, a lot of love. Uh, Last one. I'll I'll get you out on this one because again, I go back to that Super Bowl parade. What a time. I think it's the greatest time in the city's history let me ask you this, because with all these expectations in Philadelphia, was there a certain point during the season and nobody favored you guys to go all the way, but was there a point during the season where you started saying to yourself, you know, we're cooking with gas. We might have something here. I, I told my wife around week 10, we were going to win the Super Bowl. Wow. And, and it, I've been in enough, been in enough locker rooms and around enough, situations where we had it we had a a really good thing like um we had the perfect amount of leadership from the from the coaches down to the players where it wasn't overbearing and we had the perfect amount of guys like jason peters kelsey Ertz, that you know sproles that the best teams, in my opinion, police each other, and 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 it doesn't always have to come from the coaches. We we had tremendous player leadership on that team. Um, you know, I'm I'm missing out on guys like Malcolm Jenkins and 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 you know Fletcher Cox and and you know those, those guys. I'm not, I'm I'm leaving a bunch of other guys out that are. And I apologize, fellas, but that that it was like, and we had a tremendous coaching staff. I mean, in my opinion, I mean. I, I thought, you know, when you look at the coordinators on that staff and, and Jim Schwartz and Frank Reich, I mean, you can't get two better coaches, than, in my opinion, than that. I mean, those guys are all-stars. Um, then, obviously, Coach Peterson, awesome, you know. And, and, you know, you got Stout and Peel and Deuce and, and Mike Grow and, and just a, a bunch of good people and a bunch of good coaches. And it was just the players bought in. Um, there was very little bickering and all that some of that stuff that goes on and it helped that we were winning. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and put my head in the sand and say, but you know, if it helped, we obviously we were winning. And, uh, but yeah, that team was special. It it was really a a special group of of young men and um, a lot of fun to work with. Well, Hey, you've uh, really given us a lot of fun to soak in and discuss here, coach. And Hey, uh, we'll we'll talk more off the air. Unfortunately, I have a family situation that will likely prevent me from being down at the hub in Naples there on October 8th. I was really 
looking forward to that one. And if I don't get down there, uh, really, really uh, look forward to hearing all the feedback from the players and the coaches and our good friend, Tom Goodhines, all the folks over at the hub football.com. Um, I think Tom might be the most organized person I've ever, I've met in a long time. Dude, he's all over it. Uh, a listener of the show, by the way. Hey, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Tom, I'll call you this afternoon. I apologize. I'm, I'll give you a phone call back. And uh, no, it's it's really a well organized. Uh, that's probably one of the best uh, feedbacks that we get from people who attend. Is it's just so well organized, no wasted time, kind of like a uh, Coach Sirianni practice, I guess. So uh, no, have fun, buckle up. Hopefully, uh, maybe we get you on before then. If not, definitely. After that event, and uh, you, you got an open invite, Coach. We'll talk more <laughs> off the air. But anytime hey, you want to pop on, brother, you got it. You got the appreciate open, you. Uh, that's nice. That, that's real nice. And, hey, like I said, anytime. I got a lot of that. The only, only time is I, I have a, a standing tea time on Wednesdays, so I just can't. I can't play on Wednesday. Hey, I can't all right. Noted. We'll be in touch. <laughs> See you guys. Have a Coach great one. Clip.